Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing really well. Today is Friday the 19th of February. It's actually half term and I've had a, a really nice couple of days just resting and relaxing and enjoying, you know, my time off. Uh, but today I've decided to, you know, sit down, get my bullet journal all organised and ready for the new half term. And also just to uh, do a little bit of lesson planning for year 11 and year 10. So I wanted to show you a little bit of the behind the scenes of some of those lesson plans and how I've structured my midterm plans. Because I use a digital and a paper sort of organisation system. Um, and a lot of you have been asking me how I organise those at the moment, especially with teaching online. So I'm going to show you all of that. But first, we're going to make a cup of tea and I'll catch you at my desk. And here is the desk situation for today. So I've got my new bullet journal, which I'm so excited about. I've got a new plant, actually. There's my cup of tea, the book I'm reading. I'll show that to you in a moment. I've got some new uh, pens, and now I'm working through some lesson plans, which I'll also share with you as well. So these are some new pens that I got. They're really, really great for bullet journaling if you're looking for a nice highlighter. These are called the Tom Bow. They are water-based and they've got two tips. So they've got sort of like um, a felt pen there and then they have a brush um, on this side, which is super nice and soft as well. And so that came in a nice little box like that. And I just got lots of different pastel colors and those are great for my bullet journal. Speaking of which, this is my new bullet journal. So this is from Bookblock and it's my first time trying a bullet journal by Bookblock and it's customizable. So I went for my name and also just a reminder to breathe uh, because I've, doing, I've been doing lots of breathing meditation exercises. And let me just show you how I've organized it for the new half term. So the first thing is I've just written um, on this section here, my February half term to-do list, which I've just been working my way through. Um, just for memory purposes, I'm just reminding myself for when I'm looking back at this uh, in the future that this was 2021, which is insane. Um, and then what I've decided to do is to actually write down my lesson planning for week number one, just to keep me organised in terms of my lesson planning, what I still have to do. So I'm just ticking the ones um, that I have already done. And then going forward, because this half term has six weeks, the way that I've done it is I'm doing spreads like this, which is something that I've done in my previous bullet journal and I find it really useful. So all I do is I have week one, which in this case it's B, and then this is week two, which is A. So my school has um, a, a two week timetable cycle. So it has a, a week A and a week B. Um, and then I've just listed the days of the week, but I've put the date so then I can see what day data is in the day of the week as well with all of the lessons that I'm teaching. Now, I've only done it for the first two weeks, but I have left space for weeks three, four, and then five and six, um, just because we are going to be getting, um, you know, government update on the 22nd as to where the schools are going back. And we are working from home until definitely the 5th of March. So I don't really know what the plan is for these two weeks, if I'm going to be working from home or if I'm going to be working from school. So I've just decided to do these two. Um, and then what I will be doing is I'll write down the lesson that I'm actually teaching them. And then I'll put a tick once I have uploaded those resources onto Google Classroom. So that's a really easy way for me to keep organized. But let me show you what I use on um, my Google Excel spreadsheet in terms of my medium term plans. OK, so this is my medium term plan. If you haven't seen how I make this, I have, I think, a couple of videos talking about how I organize all of my medium term plans on this. But as you can see, I've got a new um, tab called Live Timetable, and that just has all of the live lessons that I'm due to be teaching whilst working from home. So I have to upload a mixture of lessons. So I have to do both live and not live. And then what I've just um, spent, maybe it took me an hour or two, is just to organize all of the medium term plans for each class. So what I do is I write down the date, I've just updated there if it's live or not. And then I write down the actual lesson 
uh, that I'm doing with each of my classes. And so I've liaised with all my teachers, we've decided what topics, um, and I just wanted to also show you how I use spaced repetition and retrieval practice embedded in my me medium term plans. Okay, so you can see here a really clear example of me teaching some content. So that's a, a lesson that is not live. That is a lesson that is live. I decided to teach the heart live because it is very tricky to understand just by, you know, students by themselves. And then we're going to be doing some practice questions. So that's going to be really important to consolidate that cognitive load that they've just experienced of learning a lot of content in one go. Then they're going to do cellular respiration on their own. And then what I've decided to do is a bit of retrieval practice. So they've learnt the content. They've been able to have a little bit of, you know, a break from that cognitive load practice. So apply their knowledge, then a little bit more content and then do retrieval of what they did the previous um, two weeks. So you can see that this is week B and then this is week B. So they will do the retrieval practice of the content that they did a week and a half to two weeks ago. And I've put that there just for that spacing effect to make sure that they're not forgetting the information that they just applied. And then I repeat this pattern going forward. So they've got the circulatory system, then the practice questions, and then the retrieval. And then I've embedded some lessons at the end for us to do a little bit of review. So I'll be looking at their practice questions and their retrieval on both occasions, and then give them some feedback and then focus on extended writing and some exam questions as well. So I use sort of this structure across all year groups. Um, and I think it's really important to think about those three key things, application of knowledge, retrieval, and then opportunity for feedback and further practice. Now, on another note, I am currently reading this. So if you don't know, I love to read. Um, I've got a goal to read 40 or 50 books this year. I can't remember what I ended up deciding. Um, let me know if you read or what you're reading in the comment section down below. But I've just started this. I've read the first short story. There are four short sto stories in this book. And I think there are two books um, of this series. So I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's a nice read. I'm going to finish it by Sunday just so that it can be my half term book. Um, yeah, so really, really loving that. If you're a teacher, I hope you've been having a really nice half term. I think the week always goes by so quickly. Um, it feels like time vanishes. But that being said, I think I have really enjoyed it, even though today is Friday, it's always bittersweet. Uh, but I did a, a bit of work on Wednesday um, and Tuesday and Thursday were just lovely days. I just relaxed, watched some movies, did a bit of reading, went for some runs. Um, and Monday I had a house tidy and declutter. I find that always so energizing. Uh, to just, you know, clean my space, organise my things, just have a, a bit of a refresh and a restart. So that was really, really good. Um, and this weekend, I'm also going to try and switch off and just enjoy these last couple of days before, you know, the new half term start, which is always exciting. I love the fresh feeling of a new half term because you update your medium term plans, you update your organisation systems. You feel like, okay, I can plan things a little bit differently or a little bit better this time. We we'll use different resources. But I think that the level of uncertainty of whether we're going back to schools is something that is at the back of my mind. But it's also just reassuring to know that on Monday, the 22nd of February, we will find out if schools are going back from the 8th of March. So, you know, maybe next week I'll update you on what's happening here in the UK if you're not in the UK. And if you are, what my thoughts are and if I agree, depending on what they announce. But for now, I have continued to plan some lessons to be delivered remotely. So that is both live and not live. So I'm just gonna show you here on my screen how I've tackled some of this planning. I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about dual coding, embedding lots of different diagrams and why diagrams can be useful, but also looking at the choice of different activities um, for topics that have a high cognitive load. And if you don't know what cognitive load is, so cognitive load theory is a theory proposed by psychology and neuroscience or, you know, the science of learning, which looks at how your brain gets to a point where it can't really process any more information uh, because all of the information that it has been processing has now reached its limit. So I'm going to insert a little diagram here. You can pause the video and look at it. But the key message for teachers is that you don't want to overload uh, the working memory of students. So if you're giving them new information, you want to chunk that and you want to separate it with some practice questions or quick quizzes or hinge type questions so that you know if they've understood it before you move on. 
So for my year 11s, I'm actually going to be using the Oak Academy. If you haven't used it before, definitely go to that website up there and they have all sorts of different subjects and pre-prepared resources. So this one, for example, has a 20 minute video, which includes pausing the video and tackling some questions. But then as the students work their way through um, the activities, so after the video, they will then have a worksheet in which they can choose if they want to print it, if they want a PDF, if they want a PowerPoint, or if they want a Google Doc, and they complete that worksheet um, and then they can do a little quiz as well. And I think just the the fact that we've got these resources already prepared and ready are just so, so amazing uh, for, for us to be able to manage our workload. So I'm definitely going to take advantage of this. Chemistry is not my specialism. I have taught this topic before, but I think that because it's a topic that has so many misconceptions, it's brilliant how the, the teacher who is doing that video, she's included so many different types of images and lots of different checkpoints that I think if I were to just do that myself, it would just be adding to my workload unnecessarily because of fantastic resources here. So using things that have already been been made and you know quality checked um, I think is a great tip so check this out if you're in a pickle um, to find some lessons as well. So I'm going to be teaching B8 uh, of the Edexcel Biology GCSE spec to my year 11s. This is um, everything to do with a heart and circulatory system. So I'm starting off by getting them to just think a little bit about analogies between transport systems and the transport systems in your human body. Um, always mentioning the objectives because that is a checklist for them and it also serves as practice exam questions, uh, which I teach them to do. So for example, this has the describe as a command word, explain and explain. So I think that is also um, useful to them, uh, especially to those students who want further practice. Um, and so then I've, I've gone for structuring the lesson by thinking about unicellular organisms and then multicellular organisms and where possible to embed some retrieval practice. So here was a really clear link that they could think about specialized cells. So I've done that. Um, and then to start to think about the link between specialized cells and, you know, human lungs. Um, so I think that's definitely useful here for them. I've got a little uh, website link there. This activity um, is like that. So they can just remove it. Um, and and then this is the main task. So whenever you're planning a lesson and thinking about what's the information that you need to give them, but what is the main thing that they're going to be doing? So for my students, this is something that is going to take them a good chunk of time. They're going to be drawing this diagram in their books. They're going to then be annotating with um, you know, answers to these questions. And then on the next slide, because this is a remote lesson, I've included a diagram that has everything already explained in it. Now that is fairly cognitive load heavy. Um, so then I'm sort of breaking things up a little bit and going on to some math skills before we then do some practice questions on what we just covered there. So I'm getting them to think about the link, you know, once again about specialized cells um, and gas exchange. And then we're linking that to math skills. So they're gonna do a little bit of calculations and then we're gonna finish off with um, some questions. So there's the application of knowledge at the end and a little revision sheet for them to do as well. So the second lesson of the unit uh, is then like this. So we're going to be talking about blood and blood vessels. I think it's always really important to include lots of images. And I think that always appeals to students because what they can visualize, they can remember. A lot of students aren't very literate. And I think literacy in science is something that I'm really fascinated about and I'm trying to do a bit more CPD on it. Uh, but here's an example of a really engaging type of activity. So you give them the answers and then they come up with the questions. So you can do this both in a live lesson or a lesson that is not live. You can give them the instructions to write down the questions in the stream um, on Google Classroom so then they can comment and actually answer those questions um, to each other. Um, lesson objectives, as always, are really important. And then I'm going on to talking about what the blood is made up of. Now this, students find this really tricky. Um, even visualizing or saying the words, they find that really challenging. So we're going to break it down. I'm gonna go into the functions, um, you know, using images where, where I need to, and then I go, I go back over it. I give them an, two more images, and then I've also linked a video for them to visualize it. And I think that is just gonna consolidate that information that we've just covered. 
We're then going to move on to actually defining the three blood vessels. Um, so here I've just split up those tasks. So this is called a transition. And what this is doing is just getting them to think about, again, the, the analogy between blood vessels and then these highways here as transport systems. So because they're doing this at home, I've asked them to explain it to someone at home. And then we're going to go on to the second part of the lesson, which is describing veins, arteries and capillaries. Um, getting them to describe the functions, the adaptations, the structures, um, and then they're going to do some practice questions to consolidate that knowledge that they've just learned. And I'm also embedding here a few more math skills because they've done that in the previous lesson. It's not the same type of math skills, but I think it's important to still include uh, math skills throughout the lessons if that's something that they are currently working on. Um, and then as always, I always like to include a little bit of extension at the end for those students who finish a little bit quicker. Um, and then we go back over the lesson objectives. Okay, so this is now lesson three. And as you can see, I'm now starting to embed a bit, a bit of retrieval. Now, the retrieval questions are not necessarily of what they've just done, although it definitely has a few questions on the previous two lessons. But it's also retrieval questions of topics, you know, that they've done weeks ago, months ago, and potentially a year or two years ago. So I like to include these because these are really, really important for them to constantly be reflecting. It increases their metacognition. Uh, something I can talk about if if you want me to, to include that in another video. Uh, but this lesson is to do with the heart. So just giving them a thinking question there before we start the lesson, the lesson outcomes once again. Um, and then I've given them a video this time. So I think starting off, this is a lesson that is high cognitive load. So starting off with a little bit of a video is going to be great. So I've linked that there. It is four minutes long. And then I've got lots of different images with text. So this is an example of dual coding where we've got the blue arrow as deoxygenated blood and the red arrow as oxygenated blood. So they can now associate colour with a word and that's exactly what dual coding is doing is when you're trying to retrieve that information you can think of the colour and that association will come with the word that you need to answer. We're then going on to some more diagrams what I've decided is to, to chunk the diagrams into different bits of information. So this one is talking about what the right and the left side are doing. So we're talking about the fact that the heart has this structure, but what does the right side do? What does the left side do? And we're linking that to whether it has oxygen or not. Then we're moving on to another diagram and we're splitting this heart into six sections. So we're talking about the atriums and the ventricles. Then we're talking about the vena cava and the aorta. Once again, linking that back to whether uh, the blood vessels are carrying oxygen or not. And then I'm introducing the valves. So you can see how I'm using dual coding to almost chunk that cognitive load as opposed to giving them a diagram with every single thing that they need to know. So if I needed you know, to include an entire diagram with these valves, all of these structures, with the fact that the blood is carried in this way, and then the fact that it's deoxygenated and oxygenated, that would be very, very heavy on the cognitive load. So I've chunked it in this way so that the information is added in addition to a diagram. So that's going to help them with their visual memory. I'm then going to bring everything together by including some text to explain it. So I will just work my way through these diagrams and explain, you know, the journey that the blood takes through the heart. So the slide actually I need to delete. And then we're going to finish off again with a bit more math skills. So that is embedded in every single lesson that I have. This is the cardiac output that they need to calculate. I'll model an example or two and then they'll do the rest. And then they've got some more questions here just as a retrieval. So can you remember that cognitive load heavy information? Um, so I've got some questions here for them. Um, and then I'm going to get them to summarize their learning in a way that makes sense to them. And that is it for that lesson. Now you saw that in my midterm plan, I want my students to be doing practice questions between the cognitive load heavy uh, type of lessons. 
So here's an example of some practice questions that they will be doing between this lesson of the blood and blood vessels and the heart lesson. So I'm actually going to get them to do this little booklet um, as one of their remote lessons. So I've included the information. This is a resource that I found online. One of my teacher friends, she shared this with me. She found it on Twitter. Twitter is incredible in terms of finding resources. So a big thank you to whoever made this. I'll try to find um, the person. And um, yeah, and you can see how there are lots of different types of activities and synthesizing information. And it just has the information there for the students to refer back to if they can't remember. But there are two main activities in this booklet with some application of knowledge and retrieval based questions as well. So I've got one of um, these for blood and blood vessels and I also have one of these for the heart. And there we have it guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you found it useful to see all of the lesson plans and also to see my bullet journal and all of my organisation tips for a new half term, even though there's so much uncertainty with whether we're going back to school or not, but at least we've got those first two weeks that we're definitely working from home. So I've organised all of those um, and I hope you enjoyed seeing all of that behind the scenes. Take care for this week, have a great, great week ahead of you and I will see you soon. Bye!